Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video we are going to be discussing FX sizes. So FX sizes tell us how meaningful or strong the relationship between two variables is. Although we have the significance value or the p-value uh, and it tells us whether there is an association or a relationship, it doesn't tell us how strong or meaningful the relationship actually is. That's where FX sizes come into play. So there are different ways in which the FX size is calculated for different statistics. So without wasting time, let's jump into it. We'll first look at how FX sizes are calculated for high square. For high square, we have these two values called Carmer's V or pi value, right? Both of these values measure the FX size. So I have a data set over here. We'll just uh, quickly jump into it. So uh, I have a video on high square. You can uh, look into it as well. So let's go analyze descriptive statistics. We go to cross tabs. So I select gender as one of my variables. The other variable I want to select is uh, whether or not someone consum consumes alcohol. I want to see if gender and alcohol consumption have an association. So gender and then alcohol consumption. And in the statistics option, I select high square as well as this other option, which is called pi and Carmer's V. I select this. This is the FX size uh, value. Then click continue. Then click OK. So now we check our output and here you can see that there is a significant relationship between uh, gender and uh, alcohol consumption and it's uh, significant at a 0.05 uh, uh, level of uh, significance, right? Um, but then you also look at the pi and karma v, right? The pi and karma v are 0 0.40 each and how do we interpret this pi and karma v? We have um, an article on this. I'll share the link in the description. So if it is greater than 0 0.25, we say it's very strong, right? Here, of course, our value is greater than 0 0.25. Uh, it is 0 0.40. So therefore, the relationship between alcohol consumption and gender is very strong in this particular study, right? Now let's look at correlation. So for correlation, uh, specifically Pearson's correlation, the R value itself is the FX size. So we don't have to calculate any additional values as such. Um, so when we look at the correlation value, we should be able to tell the FX size. So I'm sure we all know how to calculate correlation using SPSS and PSPP. I have a video on it, but nevertheless, let me just show you how to do it. So for this, uh, we go to analyze, right? We click on analyze, we click on uh, bivariate correlation. And then I've already added these values, but I'll show you how I did it. You add, uh, I, I'd like to add age, right? Then I would like to add uh, total depression. I'd like to see whether there's a correlation between uh, age and total depression, right? So I'll add that. And then I click on two tail sig uh, significance and then flag significant correlations. And then I click OK. So here in the output, um, you'll see that the correlation value has come here. It's minus 0.675. So it's minus 0.675. Uh, and the way we interpret it is this way. There's a article on this. I'll share the link in the description. So here you can see the way in which it's interpreted uh, from 0 0.90 to 1, it's considered to be very high positive or negative correlation. Uh, if it's between 0 0.7 to 9, it's high from 0 0.5 to 7, it's moderate and so on. So our value, the results that we have got is point, minus 0 0.675, which falls under the moderate, moderate category, right? The moderate category that we just observed here. Yes, 0.50 to 0 0.70. This is the level that we are at. So um, that's that's with regard to correlation. Okay, then we move on to t-test, and to calculate the FX size for t-test, uh, we use Cohen's d. So let's calculate Cohen's d. But before that, let's calculate uh, the t-test t-statistic. For this, we go to analyze, uh, compare means, right? We select uh, independent sample t-test, and here I've included the variables. On one side, I want gender. The other side, I want the amount of money spent on alcohol. So I want to see whether there's an association between gender and the amount of money people spend on alcohol. So I click on define groups. I enter male and female. Those are the two genders I want to compare. I click on OK. Now let's go ahead and look at the output. Uh, we have definitely a huge uh, difference in the mean, as you can see. And the values are also significant at uh, 0 0.01 level. So there's a high level of significance. Now let's go ahead and calculate Cohen's D. And to calculate this Cohen's D, which I have already done here, uh, we need to go to this website, uh, socialstatistics.com. I'll leave the link in the description. Uh, you just enter the mean values of each of the groups. You enter the standard deviation as mentioned in the output. All of these values are already available here. 
and then you enter the sample size for each of them right and uh, you, you click on calculate and you get Cohen's D so this is Cohen's D you va the value is 0 0.990951 which is very high actually and then when you look at um, the way to interpret this there is an article on this and of course I'll be leaving the link in the description uh, you can see it here uh, if it is higher than 0 0.8 it's considered to be large so there's a large effect uh, that's a, there's a very strong relationship between both of these variables right now we move on to Kruskal Wallis test and Kruskal Wallis test is a non-parametric statistic for this we use the epsilon squared estimate to calculate the effect size so let's go ahead and first calculate the Kruskal Wallis test for this uh, we go to our data file click on analyze right uh, then we move on to non-parametric statistic because Kruskal Wallis test is a non-parametric statistic then we select k independent samples and I've included total anxiety 2 as the dependent variable and marital status as the independent variable under defined groups I've selected all three groups uh, from married to divorced or separated click OK so I want to find out whether marital status has an association with your anxiety then I click on uh, Kruskal Wallis H test here and click OK um, now we go to the output or uh, results so here you can see that uh, the significance value is uh, less than uh, 0 0.05 which is statistically significant at a moderate level right so there is a moderately uh, moderate significance uh, when it comes to the association between marital status and anxiety but what is the effect size uh, the effect size as I told you is calculated using the epsilon squared measure for this uh, there is an article that has been published on how to calculate this this is the formula I leave the link of the article in the description we'll open the calculator and calculate it because we have all the necessary values instead of h we can use the high square value because h is equivalent to high square so we will be using that um, so here we have uh, n square minus 1 so n square is uh, actually 40 the total sample size is 40 so 40 square minus 1 so 40 square that is 40 into 40 is 1600 minus 1 is 1599 so we give 1599 on the other side we have n plus 1 which is 41 40 plus 1 41 so 1599 uh, divided by 41 we have 39 right so and the uh, h value which is equivalent to the high square value is 7.28 so what we do is we the 7.28 divided by um, 39 and the value we get is 0 0.1866 so the 0 0.1866 is to be interpreted the same way we interpret uh, r square we basically multiply 0 0.1866 into 100 right we just multiply it like this and we get 18.66 so there's 18.66 percentage of variance in the dependent variable which is anxiety because of marital status okay so marital status accounts for 18 percent of the variance in the dependent variable so that's how you interpret the effect size for Kruskal Wallis test. So with that, we come to the end of this video. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel for more such videos. It really motivates me to make more videos such as this. Thank you and see you again later.